Hello, we're back, and today's clip is about what I like to call the magic of gene expression. Now, gene expression is the process by which proteins are expressed from individual genes in the genome. So to do this today, I'm going to do a couple of things. The first thing that I'm going to do is talk about what a gene is a little bit, and then we'll talk about the process by which we take the information coded in the gene, uh, which is a series of, of uh, these bases, A, T, C, G, right? And how those are transcribed into messenger RNA. They then depart the nucleus. They go to ribosomes in the cell where they are translated into protein sequences. And uh, those are sequences of amino acids, all right? So uh, this is a really fascinating part about biology. And it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's key to understanding the importance of genes, all right? So, uh, Let's begin by talking a little bit about what a gene is. Now, a gene is a region of DNA that codes for typically a protein, okay? It codes for a protein. So uh, let's ask what that looks like first place. If you want to look down here, what I drew here was what I have drawn previously for you that we call a chromosome, right? And sometimes when chromosomes are condensed like this, we can see them with a microscope. And it does look like this little ball. And remember, Kate, in the meiosis and mitosis discussion, if this was replicated DNA, it would look like this, right? With two copies. Today, I'm only looking at the one copy. Keep in mind that you have homologous pairs of chromosomes. So you actually have in your genome two chromosomes that look code for the same genes, perhaps different alleles of this uh, chromosome, OK? Now, so I'm going to get rid of that for now, too, so you keep those things in mind. But let's unravel this. And literally, what we're doing is we unravel a chromosome. The chromosome itself is visible as a mass, but what it really is, is a, are these molecules of DNA, or this one long molecule of DNA, that is wrapped up like thread on a spool. And so in this one, I've tried to make a drawing where I unthread that. And if you, what you would see, if you go all the way back, Let's make this our DNA strands here. This is our double helix that we're familiar with. And you would see, for example, along one side of this, you might see A, T, G, C. And then on the other side, you would see the pairings of T and A, and G would pair with C, and G with C down here as well. So these are these series of bases. If I flattened this out, it might look like a, T, C, C, G, G, A, A, like this, right? Now, if you take this, remember there are billions of these in the human genome, which means that in a single cell in your body, you have your entire complement of DNA that every other cell has, and which at the molecular level, if you stretched it out, would be about six feet long. Um, now, that doesn't seem very long. When you're dealing with something that's microscopic, you're talking about something that is absolutely, uh, well, there are billions of them, okay? Billions of bases. Now, if you increase those to the example, for example, to the size of a piece of baling twine that uh, you would use to tie up a hay bale with, uh, and so that there were large molecules, and you're like, oh, I can see A, T, C, G quite easily now. Well, if they were that big, they would stretch across the continent of Africa, the DNA in a single cell. All right? That is how many bases, there are so many bases there, but they are so, so small um, that, that they are easily fit into a single cell. All right? Now, you take this string of DNA, and then this gets wound up on some little things that are called histones that are in here. So the DNA wraps around histone balls, and it wraps around the balls, and the balls then stack into collections. And so basically what you're seeing when you see a chromosome is billions of bases of DNA wrapped in tiny, tiny circles until they become visible, just like a spool of thread is more visible than a single thread. Okay? Now, let's go to the definition of gene here. Uh, the gene is a region of DNA that codes for a protein. Now, that means that a gene in this case might run from here over to here on this piece of DNA. So we can call this the gene. All right? The gene is a sequence. Now, in its most simple form, it is just straight up a simple selection like this. C, C, 
A, C, A, we can draw it just like this, right? Now, remember that's one side. These are going to be bound through these little hydrogen bonds across the way. This is one side of the DNA, right? It will be bound on the other side to its complementary bases. They call them complementary because they really only fit together one way. All right, this is the DNA backbone here. This is the DNA backbone here. And in the middle, the bases fit. A always pairs with T, T with A, C with G, C with G, G with C. So you can easily see now that we can fill in the other half of the DNA if we have the first half. So this is what makes DNA a replicable molecule. And that is that if you take this long piece of DNA and split it apart here between the bases, then each of the two sides can easily be filled in to make a complete DNA molecule by the complementary bases. Now the bases fit very precisely, so it's very difficult to fit anything but a T across from an A and anything but a G across from a C. So if you want to do something cool, you can memorize A, T, and C, and G. That's the way they pair. It's a fundamental part of DNA biology. All right, so, um, and uh, of course, if you've seen that amazing film Gattaca, Gattaca, G-A-T-A-C-C-A, -A -A. it's all about uh, uh, gene, genetic engineering and human beings. It's science fiction. It's a great show. Um, at any rate, uh, in this case, well, I won't fill in any more bases. It's just for fun. Okay, this is the structure of the DNA. The gene itself would be this coding region. It would include this series of bases. Now, typically, it's only one side of the DNA that codes for the particular gene, all right? So this side would be the coding side, for example, in what we're doing here. Um, I can arbitrarily just call it that. Um, but now, so this becomes a gene. Now, a gene could be uh, a thousand bases long, or it could be a few hundred bases long, or a few tens of bases long. It depends on the size of the protein it's going to code for, all right? Now, um, I think I'm going to stop here. And we're going to do a part two for this video. I'm going to recap where we are right now. What I'm doing is defining what a gene is for you. And now we've also looked at how this tiny piece of DNA spins around little balls and is collected up into structures that make this visible chromosome here. And we know that a gene now is just a region of DNA on there that has this series of the uh, ATCG on it. Now the next puzzle is how do we get from this information molecule to actual proteins that do things in the cell. Now remember proteins are going to be things like enzymes that can form bonds between other molecules. Uh, the muscle fibers are made up of primarily protein motors, uh, actin and myosin fibers, all these super important things, your entire body built of proteins. Uh, so uh, we're going to go from this to those proteins. All right.